to work um, along like that. So when they say in derivative, what they're just saying is that whatever it is they're talking about, it applies to all the derivatives. And the n being whichever derivative you're trying to find. So if I'm trying to find the second derivative, then that n is two, right? If I'm trying to find the fourth derivative, then that n is four, okay? But that's all that that n derivative means. It's not anything more than just that. Just to tell you which number of derivative are you asking about. Um, so I do have a few examples. There are quite a bit. Uh, I picked out number one, number four. These are the ones from WebAssign. Number nine, number 11, 14, 17, 18, and 21. So we have a lot of them, but I felt like it was important to kind of cover these because there's different things happening in each one of them, okay? Um, so for the first one, it does say to use the product rule. Now, if you're on a test, and it specifically says use the product rule, you have to, okay? Otherwise you get points deducted for your explanation because you didn't explain the product rule, right? You did something else. Um, but if it doesn't say product rule, then you could take the derivative however you want to. And me personally, I might've just chosen to foil that out and then take the derivative of each of the four terms. And it wouldn't have been a bad process, okay? probably would have been shorter and easier, in my opinion, than doing it the product rule. So make sure you pay attention when you do this chapter three test, if it tells you you have to do a certain rule or not, okay? Because if it does, you have to do it that way. Don't try to do it another way. You could do it another way to your answer, but make sure that you at least somewhere on your paper explain it the way that was asked, okay? So if I have to use the product rule, I got two messages about ordering of all these derivatives, okay, right? Um, I tried to give you like a little mnemonic that I learned when I was taking calculus back at Palo Alto. Um, and that was that low D high minus high D low over low squared, right? That really helped me to know which one was gonna go in the front of the minus and which one was gonna go in the back of the minus and who went at the bottom and all that good stuff. With the product rule though, I'm gonna write it on the board. It really doesn't matter. So our product rule says that if you have a function and it's defined as some function times another function, right? It really doesn't matter which one you do the derivative of first, okay? So you could have h of x times g prime of x plus um, g of x times h prime of x, okay? So that's usually the way I write it is the first times the derivative of the second, so it's the second times the derivative of the first. You'll hear me say that over and over and over because this is just the one that I prefer. But you have a lot of algebraic rules of commut commutation. Commutation means that you get the same result if you move the numbers around, okay? And so we have another version of this where I could take that guy and put it in front, right? And then this guy and put it in the back. Okay, this is exactly the same thing, right? All I did was instead of putting the first term plus the second term, I wrote the second term plus the first term. There's nothing wrong with that, they're equivalent, okay? I could even use the commutation for multiplication and write these the other way around if I really wanted to, okay? And I could choose to just write one of them the other way around, or I could write them both the other way around. It's all a choice, okay? So the product rule is really hard to mess up because there are so many different ways. There's like eight of them, possibilities of writing it, and it's still the same thing, okay? The issue is that you wanna make sure that's happening is that when you're talking about one term, you have to have one as the original and one as the derivative, okay? And it can't be the same function either. You can't put this original and put its derivative together. It has to be the original and then the derivative of the other guy, okay? And then whatever you did over here, you have to do the opposite over here. So if you kept this one as original, then over here you have to do its derivative. And if you kept that one as a derivative, then over here you would have to do the derivative, okay? That's the main idea. So you write one original, the other guy's derivative, plus sign. Then the first guy's derivative times the other original. Okay? And it doesn't matter what order you put them in. 
I'm going to use this one just because that's literally how it rolls off my tongue whenever I say it out loud. Okay. So I will always say the first, meaning this first function, right, times the derivative of the second plus the second, just as it is, times the derivative of the first. I will always do that. So in the shorthand, I would go 1v2 plus 2v1. That's for my product rule. The, the other one is the one that I use the mnemonic, right? So it's low v high minus high low all over low squared. And the way I remember with where the high and the lows go is that I have two lows at the bottom, right? And I have two lows at the top on the end. And okay? that's literally how I remember where the lows go. I have to start with low and I have to end with low. And we already know the situation, right? One is original, the other is the derivative. So if I just said low by itself, then the next one needs to be derivative, right? And then if I have to end with low, then this one's going to be the original of that derivative of the other one. Okay. The only difference between these two guys is when you're doing a different uh, quotient, it has a minus, right? And so this one's super important that you don't get mixed up because you cannot write this one in the front and that one in the back, right? It's not the same thing. Two minus three is not the same thing as three minus two. One of them is negative and the other one is positive, right? You just can't get this one back. But these are going to be the two mnemonics that I use as we keep going. You're going to hear me say it over and over and over again. Hopefully, you pick it up <laughs> kind of like a song, right? <laughs> Hopefully, it'll just come in. So if I have to do the derivative of this, this is going to be labeled as my first function, and this one is going to be labeled as my second function. So when I say the mnemonic out loud, I'm saying the first which is the x squared plus five times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. I left it in C because I haven't done it yet, right? So what is the derivative? This is the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times derivative of the first. What is the derivative of the second factor? Two X is correct. Minus six, there you go. Because the derivative of X is what? One and six times that one, just leave it. Good. Those are the key ones to remember, right? I'll put the little paper down here. So those are the key, key things. That the derivative of a constant is zero, the derivative of x is one, our power rule, and then the constant multiplier rule, right? So if we have a constant in the front, we could just take it out and just take the derivative of the other stuff. Okay, what about the derivative of the first factor? Yeah, because this one is what? Zero, so it's just two X. So I didn't need that big of a space. And then from there, they might ask you to foil it or combine like terms, do whatever you gotta do just to simplify this thing. So for the top, I am going to foil that out or distribute. I'm gonna distribute my X squared and then I'm gonna distribute my five. So I get 2x to the third minus 6x squared plus 10x minus 30. And over here, it's weird because I just imagine this thing like right here. And then if it were right there, it's a positive 2x that I'm distributing. Okay. So when I do 2x times x squared, that's 2x cubed. And then positive 2x times negative 6 is negative 12x. And the pink is just what I'm visualizing. I didn't have to write that. So what I'm visualizing is that people have to use that. So then we combine our like terms. We end up with 4x cubed minus 18x squared plus 10x minus 30. 
And had you just foiled this out and then took the derivative, you should get the exact same thing. Okay. So just pay attention when you're doing the test. In the computer, the computer doesn't know, right? It just wants the answer. It's not going to know whether you follow the directions or not. But when I'm reading your test, I do know whether you're following the directions or not. So I would always say practice following the directions that WebAssign gives you because the problems that I put on the test are coming from the WebAssign question. Okay. Um, so if you see something and you're like, oh, well, I don't have to do it that way, I could do it this way. Yeah, but then now you're not practicing the problem for the test, right? So make sure you try to do it whatever way they're saying to do it. Okay, number four. So I left number two and number three. Hopefully you can figure those out. If not, when we have class time later, you can ask questions. Number four, ask us specifically to use the quotient rule. So then this one up here is going to be my high, right? Because it's above the bar. And then this one's going to be my low because it's below the bar. So when I use the mnemonic to find the derivative, it's going to be low d high minus high d low, where my fraction bar is. And then the bottom is going to be low squared. I like to set it up like that. You don't have to, but that's just how I like to set it up. So the low, low stays just the way it is. But when I do the derivative of the top, what do you end up with? What is the derivative of three cosine x? Because I have to take the derivative. It is negative three sine x. And somebody did catch, there was an error, I think, in this problem when I did it in the video or something similar to it. I had a plus there. And there's two people that caught it, but only the first one that caught it got the bonus point for the test. But yes, it should have been a minus. Okay. So if you go look through the comments, you'll find the person that commented. I think it was like video three, three minute mark or something like that that they mentioned. Um, but yes, it is right there. Example five. So high is going to stay exactly the same. And then D low, what is the derivative of that denominator? Mm -hmm. It's exactly the same thing, right? Constant multiplier, but the derivative of e to the x is still e to the x. Then my denominator squared, I'm going to write that. And so when I multiply these two guys, I get negative six e to the x sine x. And when I multiply these two together, I get negative six e to the x cosine x all over. And when I square this, I get four. But here's the tricky part. What do you get when you do e to the x times itself? E to the x. Mm -hmm. Because when you multiply bases and exponents, what do you do with the exponents? you add them. So yes, it will become 2x. Now I stopped the video here, but this can actually simplify. I could factor out um, a 2 and an e to the x. And I would have negative 3 sine x, negative 3 cosine x over 4e to the 2x. I could even write this, if it's easier for you to see, times e to the x. So one of these e to the x's is going to cancel. And even the 2 and the 4 reduce. So 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 4 twice. So you actually end up with this fraction after all of your simplifying. In the quotient rule, whenever you do the quotient rule, you always want to try to simplify it. And this is the part that's going to get really, really weird as we keep going. Okay. Um, sometimes what you have to factor out is not nice and simple and looks really cute, pretty. It just is a nightmare. Mostly it's when I have to do derivatives with radicals. Okay. So we haven't had too many of those, but if you do, and you have to use the quotient rule, they're gonna be a little challenging. Okay, 
let's keep going. So this one, these rooms are always a little bit difficult to figure out just because we need to know what exactly is what I'm wanting, right? Um, so they're asking us to rewrite it. And if I rewrite it, um, the two can stay there, but what would I get for X if I simplified that fraction? What do you do when you have something with an exponent divided by something else with an exponent? It's invisible downstairs, but if there is an exponent, you subtract. Yeah, yeah. So what's going to be our new exponent then? Mm -hmm. Three halves minus this invisible one is one half. Now it says for me to differentiate. So now I'm talking about y prime. And what happens when I bring this power down to get multiplied by my constant multiplier? What is the one half times two? Just one. But then I still have to decrease my power by one. So what do I get when I do one half take away one? Negative one half. And then it says to simplify, well, the problem was given to you in a fraction. So just make sure you put it back in a fraction. And since I do know there's an invisible one there, that's what's in my numerator. And we don't really write the one half exponent. What does the one half exponent represent? Yeah, there you go. You got it, the square root. So the negative meant the X is downstairs, right? But the one half meant it was the square root. Okay, number 11, this one asks us to find the derivative. Does it say how we need to do it? It doesn't. Now I'm gonna do it a specific way and I'm gonna tell, explain to you why I'm gonna do it a specific way. Okay. If I just got a right? I'm gonna have to do this one times the derivative of that one, and that one times When it's time to the derivative, are they gonna have to uh, I just wanted to say real quick okay. on the last one, uh, it web assign won't accept it if you turn it into a, into a radical. radical. It just wants one half? Yeah. It wants okay. Thank you. So he's saying, don't do that, just put it downstairs. Well, I mean, it makes sense because they didn't give me this in order to come, right? Yeah. So I guess it makes sense. Okay. So I personally do not like the double webbing my, my rules thing if I don't have to. So if I were to try to apply product, I would have to do the derivative of this times this and then the derivative of this times that. When I have to do this derivative, I'm going to have to use quotient weight. Okay. But I don't like to do product rule and quotient rule all mixed in there together. It gets really complicated. Okay. So what I prefer to do is just distribute this guy. And when I do that, I can take the derivative of that first term, no problem. The second term, I can go ahead and use quotient rule. And then I'm only doing one of those rules, okay? not both the product and the quotient. So first, we'll do that. And I'm not taking the derivative, so I'm just keeping my f just as f. What do I get when I multiply x to the fourth times that fraction, though? Mm -hmm. Over x plus 6, right? Does that reduce? I'm asking this question because no, it's, it's because it, it, um, it's not factors. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I'm asking this because there are still people doing this. Okay. This expression here, I shouldn't write there. I'll write it over here somewhere. 
So when you have this, you cannot cancel that X with this X. You can never, 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 ever, <laughs> when you have a fraction, cancel a term, okay? So if you have multiple terms, you can't just take one of them away like that, okay? You can only cancel factors, which means it has to be something times something else, and then something times something else, and you can cancel the factors because they're multiplied by something, right? So if I were to do this and put an X outside, I could cancel that X because it's multiplied by the X plus four, okay? And then I could cancel these. I always use this as an example. So if you did it on the test, you would have seen my example. But I do 16 over eight. What is 16 over eight equal to? This is two, right? 16 divided by eight, two. But if I were to write uh, 12 plus four over four plus four, and I were to try to do what you told me to do, right? You'd get 12 over four, which is what? Three, so they're not the same, are they? But if I do it in factors, four times four and two times four, the fours cancel, you get four over two, what's four divided by two? Two, and that does equal, right? So that, I always use contradictory rules. You cannot apply a rule unless it works for absolutely everything all the time, right? It was the same thing when we were doing that sign of 3x or something like that. Someone took the three out and they did like this. You can't do that. This doesn't work for every single x value, okay? So be careful with those rules. I know there are a lot to remember at this point because they're a lot, they are a lot. Lot. <laughs> oh, there's exponent rules, you know, all kind, mostly exponent rules. But I don't know if you remember back when you were learning exponent rules. It was a long list of exponent rules, wasn't it? And so now we're like putting them into action, but it's hard to remember every single one of them. Unfortunately, we have to. <laughs> so let's just keep going. So now I'm going to take the derivative of this guy. And this one is not so bad, right? That's just a regular power rule. Right? We get 4x and then take away one, a 3 exponent. This one's the one that's going to be a little bit more complicated because it is a fraction. It's already as simple as it's going to get, but it's still a fraction. So we have to do our quotient rule. So I'm going to do low d high. What is the derivative of the top? And don't consider the negative because I already put the negative right there. It's already considered. Mm -hmm. You multiply that, 20x, and then what power? Three, good. Minus high, just as it is, d low. So what's the derivative of the bottom? Yes, one plus zero, which is just one. Good. And then at the bottom, we're just going to have low squared. So let's see what that looks like. This I'm going to distribute. So I get 20x to the fourth plus 120x cubed. And here that's just minus 5x to the fourth. And then now we actually have that negative in the front, right? So if I want these brackets to go away, I do have to distribute that negative. So I'm going to take this negative and distribute it to all of the people in the top. Do I also distribute it to the people at the bottom or the one term at the bottom? No, right? Your negative can only go in one place. If it goes in both places, isn't it actually positive? Right? So this would become, um, I have to be very careful. Since the negative is gone, I'm actually adding these fractions and it's a negative 20 X to the fourth, negative 120 X to the third and make positive five X to the fourth. I don't like this and I don't know if WebAssign takes the fraction all broken up or if they want just one fraction. But if they do, what would be the common denominator?
Mm -hmm. This guy, right? So this one doesn't even have a denominator. So we would multiply by x plus 6 squared over x plus 6 squared. So that essentially we're just multiplying by really weird looking ones, right? And it doesn't change the value of this term. Then, because they are both over x plus 6 squared, I can write them together as one fraction. And I don't need this plus negative because what's a positive times a negative? It's just going to be negative. And then positive times a negative is just going to be negative. Positive times a positive will be positive. But in the front, I do want to distribute that out. Sure. Right here. Nope. Because is that x plus six multiplied by the whole numerator? Is the x plus six multiplied by the entire numerator? It's not. It's multiplied by one term in the numerator. So it's like the same thing as doing this. You have these two guys, and this one is written as two times two plus two. You can't cancel that one without it. Okay. Okay. But thank you for asking. If this guy were multiplied by all of that, then yes, you could cancel one. Okay. If this x plus six was multiplied by everything, then it would be a real factor for the whole numerator. But right now it's not, it's just a factor of one term. So for this one, I'm gonna actually FOIL that out. And it is x squared plus 12x plus 36. And then we'll distribute our four x to the third. So we get 4x to the fifth plus 48x to the fourth plus what is 4 times 36? 144x cubed. And so our final answer Let's see, four X to the fifth. And we have 48 minus 20, which is 28 X to the fourth. We have 144 minus 120. So that's 24 X to the third. Oh, I still have another X to the fourth. What do I get when I combine these three terms together? These two together made 28, but then if I have to add five, Now you could try to factor that. I think the only thing that would be easiest to factor out is the x cubed. And remember, your goal is to try to like reduce this x plus six squared. But I promise you, even if you factor out the x to the, the x cubed, this stuff in here is not going to factor to x plus six. At least I don't think it will. Let me check something. Negative. Uh, no. Yeah. Negative 33 squared. Minus 4 times A times B. Square root of 705 is not right. Nope, it's not going to factor. So you cannot simplify this anymore. I would leave it like this though. 
You don't have to do this. Is anybody still writing it? Does anybody have any questions? Okay, we have some more. Well, hopefully those will help when you do yours on the website. Okay, what about this one? This is like number 14. It says, find the derivative of this function. Mm -hmm. You could. I'm not taking a derivative yet, though, right? So it stays f. And if you multiply those out, you get x squared plus 2x minus 15. And then what would you do next? You do the product rule? Would everyone do the product rule? Mm -hmm. Some others might try to just distribute it, right? I personally wouldn't just because this is three people, right? And it's not as simple as FOIL, right? It's distribute 2x cubed, then distribute 5x, and then combine like terms, okay? So it could take a little bit more paper actually if you did it the distribution way. But if you do product rule, it should be okay. So let's go ahead and do our derivative then. So we're gonna do the first function times the derivative of the second function plus the second function times the derivative of the first function. So the first one stays the original, right? So we're taking the derivative of the second one. What is the derivative of this second term? Yes, 2x plus two. Then the second one stayed the same. So now we should be doing the derivative of this term. Yes, you multiply, decrease your power. And then this is just five times one. And then from here, what do we do? See, we would have had to distribute a two by three anyway. So it might have been probably the same amount of work. So let's see. Um, 4x to the fourth plus 4x cubed plus 10x squared plus 10x. And here I'm going to distribute each one of these. Since this is a plus sign, I don't need to put my product in a parenthesis. But if this was a minus, I would have to put a parenthesis because then that minus applies to everything after it, right? But since it's a plus, I'm good. I don't need parentheses. So x squared times 6x squared is 6x to the fourth. x squared times 5, 5x squared. 2x times 6x squared, 2x times 5. 15 times this, I don't know what that is, 90? Is it 90? And then 15 times five, is that 75? Yeah, okay. Um, so then now imagine these are over here. It's not like a fraction or anything like that but I'm just gonna combine the like terms. So we've got fourth powers right there. We've got cubes here and cubes here. 
So that makes 16. We've got x squared here and here and here. So 10 plus 5 is 15, and 15 minus 90 is negative 75. Then our x's, we have 10 and 10, so 20x. And this is the only constant, so it's just minus 75. I literally use symbols to be more like this. I mean, I recommend you do it too if you want to, but I just try to use a different symbol so I know which ones I'm talking about. I think some people strike them out, like they find all the x to the force and strike them out. And then when they go to the cube, they strike those out. It just kind of narrows in your focus as you're going. Okay. Yeah, boxes, triangles, all, yeah, exactly. Yes, I was gonna say it, but I was like, no butter. <laughs> okay, um, 33. I can kind of leave that one a little bit up there for now. So 3.317 says, determine the point at which the graph of the function has a horizontal tangent line. We've actually done that before, right? We talked about when you have a horizontal tangent line, it means the tangent line is flat, right? That's the horizontal line. And what's the slope of a flat horizontal line? Zero. So you're essentially figuring out when does your slope of your tangent line equal zero, right? So this means when m tan equals zero. That's what you're trying to find. And we know that m tan is nothing more than just the derivative, right? So when does your derivative equal zero is what you're trying to find. Well, in order for me to set my derivative equal to zero, I first have to have the derivatives, right? So we're gonna figure out what f prime is. And it is a fraction, so we're gonna do our quotient rule for this. Not yet. We don't, we don't have chain rule yet. You may have already seen the video for chain rule, but not yet. If, when you do it, if you were to put this like this, if the base of any, any part, if the base of any part is not just an X, then it's gonna require chain rule, okay? And if you notice, this part right here does not have a base of X. It has a base of X squared plus one, okay? So once I learn chain rule, yes, I can do that using the product rule and chain rule. But right now I cannot. You'll be missing a whole factor of two X if you don't do it with chain rule, okay? So I'm gonna do low d high. What's the derivative of the top? 2x minus high d low. What is the derivative of the bottom? Because mm -hmm. the one goes to zero, right? All over low squared. I'm gonna simplify that as much as I can. And these actually cancel, don't they? 2x cubed minus 2x cubed. So I have my first derivative, but I'm not done with the problem. The problem probably just wants a number, an x value. So what do I do from here? Mm-hmm. That's my f prime, right? So my f prime just became this fraction and I'm setting that equal to zero. And how do you solve when you have fractions equal to zero? Say it again? Not yet, only if I have a polynomial equal to zero do I factor. You might be thinking of what to do, but not using the right word. 
Yes, we always multiply by the common denominator. So we can get rid of the common denominators, right? And turn it into just a regular problem without fractions. So yes, I would multiply by this comp by this denominator. I'm just gonna put D because I'm too lazy to write parentheses x squared plus one squared. <laughs> so that's the denominator. And what happens is, is if that denominator is getting multiplied up here, it's gonna cancel out. And what zero times anything, it's still zero. So really, I'm only worried about the numerator, right? Equal to zero. And so if we divide both sides by two, we get x equal to what? Zero. And so this is the number that they're asking. It just happens to be zero, it's not always zero. Oh, he wants a coordinate? Okay, perfect, thank you. So then what's the y value? Into your function or into your derivative? Right, because the original function tells you the y value, right? f of x by itself is just fancy way of saying y. So y is f of x, but I know what x is. Mm -hmm. You get zero over one, which is still just zero. So then your point or your coordinate would be this. Okay, we're almost there. So for this one, what is it asking us for? It is asking us for a second derivative. Which der what do we have? What were we given? The base function, the original, right? The original function. So then how many times am I gonna have to be taking derivatives? Twice. What if, what if, because I know there's one in the website. What if it asked me for the fourth derivative and it gave me the second derivative. Like it said, f double prime equals this. Exactly, you got it. What if it asked me for the third derivative and they give me f double prime? You only take it once, okay? So however many times you need to take derivative to get to whatever number they're asking you for. But here I have the original, so it's like it's a one, right? It has not. That's not even one, it's like nothing. I have not taken the derivative at all, but I need to get to an F double prime, okay? So second derivative means they're asking me for F double prime. So let's first try to figure out what F single prime is. So what would be the derivative of each of these terms? Four x to the third. Mm -hmm. Yep. You got it. But that's only one prime, right? So let's get our double prime. And we're just basically taking the derivative of that previous line. So what would the derivative be? If I multiply, I get 12. If I take away one, I get two. If I multiply, I get 24. If I take away one, I get one, but I'm not gonna write that. It's usually invisible. And then 18 times one is just 18. And then the derivative of a constant is just zero. So this is what they're asking me for, that double prime. Okay, what about this one here? Oh God, this one's not nice. Well, no, it's a, a quotient, right? 
So you might think, oh, I have to do kosher rule. Could you not do kosher rule in this one? Could we use product rule instead? If I wrote this as this, is my base of this thing just X? It is. So we totally could do it. It's not like the other one where the base was X squared plus one, right? So we could get away with product rule, which is a lot easier to do. So I'm gonna do G prime. So I'm gonna do it this way. I'm gonna identify this is my first one and this is my second one. Some people don't. Some people see it as seven is the constant multiplier and then e to the x as the first guy and x to the negative one as the second guy. So whichever way it will still work out the same, okay? It's just here, you'll only do the product rule with these two guys and you just have to distribute that seven when you're all done. But I don't like to do the distributing later. So I just take this whole group and this guy's a constant multiplier of just him. So I'm gonna do the first function just as he is times the derivative of the second function. What is the derivative of that second part? The x to the negative one. Mm -hmm. So you bring down the negative one, right? As a constant multiplier, and then you decrease it by one, which means now it's negative two. Yep. And then plus the second one, just like it was, times the derivative of the first. So what's the derivative of seven e to the x? It is constant multiplier and derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. So I'm gonna multiply these, I get negative seven x to the negative two e to the x. Multiply these, I get seven x to the negative one e to the x. Now I still have to take the second derivative and I would much rather not have to use the product rule twice. Because right now the way it is, when I try to take the derivative of this term, I'm gonna have to use the product rule. There's something with x and something else with x and x. So I would have to do the product rule here just for that first term. But then over here, it'd have to do the exact same thing, right? However, if I factor out what they have in common, I might not have to do it. I'll explain why I'm gonna to have to do it twice. If I were to go over here to the side and factor out seven X to the negative one, actually X to the negative two, because that's the lower exponent, I would end up with negative one plus X like that. Nobody, a lot of people don't have experience doing this. They might not even understand what that is. Right? Remember, this times something has to give me this whole term, right? And that's exactly what I'm factoring out. I'm just missing the negative, right? But there has to be something I multiply by. They can't just multiply by a negative. But if I do it times a negative one, then I do get this term. Now, I took out a negative two. Remember, even when you take out something, don't you subtract it? So if I had, let's say, I'm going to erase it. So let's say I had x cubed plus x squared. I'm taking out the x squared. Don't I take away one? I take away two and I only end up with one. And here the whole thing came out, so it's just one, right? Take away. This, take away this exponent. Go back over here. If I'm taking out negative two, what is negative one take away negative two? You end up doing negative one plus two, right? Because you're taking away negative two. So it becomes plus two and negative one plus two is actually this function. Okay, also if you multiply this times this, once you add the exponent, and what is negative two plus one? It's negative one, right? You have to be very careful with the negative exponent. It's gonna come back. We're gonna have to get used to it. So we even have fractions. That even gets a little weirder. So you are doing this guy, negative one, take away negative two. 
which is why we got that one exponent right there. Okay. Now, notice, don't you have three things now that have x's in them? That's even the worst nightmare for product rule. Okay. I definitely don't want to try to take the derivative of this. So I had done this in my head and would look at that and then looked at this in my head and was like, nope, I don't want to do this. Okay. It's far easier to just do a product rule here, a product rule there, and then see what I get. Okay. So we won't be doing it this way. That's a triple product that's very hard. It's not that it's impossible, it's just weird. So let's do double prime. So I'm gonna put my terms in brackets because I have to do the product rule for this term and I have to do the product rule for that term. So I'm just kind of keeping them separate with brackets. So for the first one, I'm gonna say this is my first and this is my second. For the second term, I'm gonna say this is my first function and this is my second. Oh, much better. So let's see, we have the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. So what is the derivative of this second factor? E to the X. What is the derivative of this first factor? Mm -hmm. Negative two times negative seven is positive 14. You're right. And when you take away one, you get negative third power. It's like a glare. I'm trying to move it so the glare goes away. There it goes. We'll leave it alone for now, but let's do the other setup. So the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. So here, what is the derivative of the second factor? And what is the derivative of the first factor? You got it. Be the negative one times the seven, positive seven is negative seven. And then yes, take away one from your power. Okay. So then when I multiply those, I get negative seven x to the negative two e to the x. I get positive 14 x to the negative three e to the x. Here it's a positive, so it's not really gonna change the signs. So this is gonna stay positive seven x to the negative one e to the x. And this, a positive times a negative is negative seven x to the negative two e to the x. Are there any like terms? Mm -hmm. It's actually these two. Don't they both have x to the negative two e to the x, right? Now, when you write terms, if you're trying to write them formally, you should always go, they all have an e to the x, so that's not gonna help me order them. Um, but you always wanna go with the highest exponent down to the lowest exponent. But with negatives, it kind of looks like the opposite, right? Because negative one is actually the higher number then negative three, right? So this term would actually go first, then the x to the negative twos, which I'll have negative 14 of those, and then the x to the negative threes. And so we get this guy there. I mean, and you could try to factor it if you want to, but I think if you just type in all three terms, it should accept it in WebAssign. Okay. 
Okay, that's the last one I have is some of you have been working on WebAssign while we're in here. Is anyone coming up with any issues? Any questions? Which one is it? Where is my assignment? There it is. What is it saying? Gotcha. Okay, what numbers did you have on the top? 7x minus 7. So number 12, you had 7x minus 7, right? Like that? Oh, you can't see my paper no more. So like this one? Okay. It's just asking for derivative, right? Um, yes. Okay. So can we do this one? Did you do a product rule? Okay, you can. That would be x to the what power? Yes, x to the negative one half. And you can do the product rule with that because my base is just x, right? You're totally okay. So we're gonna do the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. What's the derivative of this second guy? Yes, negative one half x to the power of negative three halves. And then what's the derivative of the first guy? Seven. And so then here we have to distribute. So you get negative seven over two x to the negative one half plus seven over two x to the negative three halves plus seven x to the negative one half. Gotcha. Do you see how I got this? Right? This number times that number, and then you add the exponents. What's so one plus negative three? Yes, good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You just thought you couldn't. I just thought it could. Um, if, if we have that, I'll, I'll try to Right. Well, sort of. It depends. Because if what you had inside the exponent inside there was just one term with two factors, you could give both of these numbers that power. And it's totally okay. And then you could distribute it. But if you had this, oops, plus x then you, you can't really distribute that because it has the plus in the middle. Sure. Yes. Which one were you gonna ask? About this one? Yeah. Oh, you did quotient rule. Okay, cool, that's fun too. Now, if you do quotient rule, you will get to that one. What'd you say, number six? Okay, I'll write it down. Um, you had four and nine, four x minus nine over square root of x. You still have to rewrite it, but not as a product. You just write x to the power one half, okay? So then when you do the derivative, and this one's not finished because it has to add those. So you get seven halves x to the negative one half plus seven halves x to the negative three halves. So that should have been the answer answer. I just didn't finish it. So for here, we have to do low d high minus high d low all over low squared. 
So what is the derivative of the high? And what's the derivative of the low? And then I'm going to actually, this is one term. So I'm going to imagine that it's a negative and then I'm going to distribute it, okay? So that becomes negative two X. When you add the exponent, so you get positive one half and then negative times the negative is positive nine halves x to the negative one half. What do you get at the bottom? Sure, sure, sure. I'm gonna do what I did on the other one, where I imagine this is one half x to the negative one half, and I'm distributing that negative to these two guys. pushed it in there, but I'm just imagining this guy in the front, and but it's a negative now. So when you multiply, one half times four is two, and x times x to the negative one half, you add their exponents, they get positive one half. But a negative times a positive is a negative. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. So down here you have x, you get two x to the one half. And then how do I make it so that it's not a fraction? You just take away one. So one half minus one is two x to the negative one half. Negative one half take away one is x to the negative three halves. So you still get sort of the same thing as he did up here, but just with your numbers and not his. Okay, number six. Number six, what does number six look like? So it's the same function, just a different number down here, right? Okay. So what is the derivative of this? I'm gonna just type it in here. So low d high, yeah, cosine of x minus high d low. What's the derivative of x? Just one, so nothing really happens. I'll just close the parentheses. And then low squared would be x squared, right? And then when you plug in your value, what's your value? So you would have f prime of pi over four. And I'll switch my screen over in just a minute. So you would have this, right? I put pi over four everywhere there was an x, right? And so what is cosine of pi over four? Mm -hmm. And then sine of pi over four? And then if you square pi, it's just pi squared. And if you square four, what is it? 16. Now remember, you can multiply, instead of dividing, you can multiply by the reciprocal. What is four times two at the bottom? So top times top, bottom times bottom, and then that's all by itself, right? But this whole numerator can get multiplied by the reciprocal. So then you distribute that. I'm just gonna write it out. I'm not gonna actually like simplify it yet. Let me zoom in a little bit because I know it's real tiny. So these two guys multiplied together is just going to be that numerator times this numerator, this bottom times this bottom. I did kind of put this one together. 
But when you multiply that times that, you just get 16 squared of two. When you multiply this times this, it's just two pi squared, right? Now here, the one of these pi's will cancel with one of those pi's. This eight will reduce to one, this 16 will reduce to two. So you end up with two square root of two over pi. Over here, the only thing that can reduce is the two and the 16. So two goes into two once, two goes into 16, eight. So you get eight square root of two over pi squared. How does it want your answer? It does not say round or anything like that. So try to type in this, this thing right here. It, it says this, okay. 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 It probably has some kind of error setting that it accepts within some certain error. That's a faster way to do it. I probably would have done it if just to see if it would have taken it. And then if it didn't, I'd do it this other way. <laughs> In there, yeah, yeah. Hey, if it works, it works. I don't think I do that to anybody on the test, but <laughs> it's a little bit weird. Any other questions? If you're working on it, which one? 16? Okay. 16. Let's see what 16 is. Um, uh, I can't do this one. I can go see your paper, but I can't do it on the board because there's nothing red. So if I do this problem, I'm literally giving everyone the answer. <laughs> but have you tried it already? Yeah, okay, I'll go with you. Okay, Then 
this one and this one is more than one. Okay. Yeah, we have a Oh, I didn't like the X element. So now if you were to put that, what do you have? Six, seven, 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 seven. If you were to put each one for X, track one. So that was one half on the side. Oh, you lost your one. No, I got two. Oh. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. it. That's it. Um, yeah, yeah. I think it puts some things in the crack and brain. Oh, no. Uh, can I do a negative square root? Because it did give me that as a square root. Do a negative square root with the first one to two. Can make that. Oh, no, 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 it won't work that. So just erase that radical. Go next to the two, behind the two, and hit the fraction bar. And then because it was, what was it? It was negative one half, right? So when it goes to the bottom, yeah. it becomes positive one half, so it's just the square root of x. It's a regular square root. Is that not what it is? But then that one, when that one goes downstairs, it's going to be with that two that's under the nine. Mm -hmm. But it's going to actually be the square root of x cubed. Because it's three. Yeah. Okay, you still have the two there. And then the square root, but then the three is how it Yeah, that's the other right side. So they didn't like that, so that's what we got, right? After we did the quotient rule. We have that same thing, but we didn't like it. What does it like? Oh, I have positive one. Where did it go? Where did it go? So we have this guy negative, makes this guy negative, and makes this guy positive. So when you distribute that, this first one would have been negative, and then the second one would have been negative. Okay. So it might have been that. In the plus and the middle, yeah. Because everything else is just that. Right. I wonder if you would have taken the power version. You know, like six on the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. 
And the reason why is because the general will make the same goal apply. Don't worry about it. But it will work. As long as the derivative of what this side has is not to one, it does seem to be.
Oh, yeah. Well, I already have it on my phone. Not need that. Thank <laughs> you. 